Pele is the greatest footballer the world has ever seen. His real name is Edison Arantes. He was born in the state of Minas in 1940. An old sock filled with newspapers was the first ball his magical feet kicked, but it was enough for him to fall in love with the game and for the people to start noticing he was different. When Pele was 15, a local coach took him to play football for the club, Santos. Upon arriving in the city, Brito told the coach this kid will be the best in the world. Within minutes, the coach was impressed with Pele and signed him on the spot. This was in 1956. Two years later, Pele would be in Sweden, spearheading Brazil to a World Cup title. The first of six for the team, he scored two goals in the final against Sweden. He was still 17. At the final whistle, Pele fainted on the field while he was being carried by the celebrating crowd. Of course, he was a kid. Pele was famously easygoing, kind, joyful, and a reliable friend. These are words that came out of Pele's old friend Didi. Pele was always a very nice guy. We would spend so much time talking. He didn't have any star attitude. In addition to skills and charisma, a certain thing always surrounded the character of the king of football, Pele. One of his many famous quotes made at his last match ever played in 1977 in New York was honoring children with his limited English. He just said, love, love, love. On the pitch, Pele became an instant celebrity following the 1958 World Cup triumph. Upon returning to Brazil, he helped Santos build a dynasty, winning 25 titles in the 1960s. Despite being world famous, Pele kept living a down-to-earth life in Santos. He would share a guest house with other players and cycle around the city. Lala, a goalkeeper and Pele's former teammate, said, the pair was pretty bad, but he did it for the love of the game, and we had so much fun. Despite being a widely diverse country ethnically, Brazil is not often represented by people of color. So having someone black as its biggest celebrity and star had a cultural impact on the country. Aside from being the world's best football player, Pele also ventured into show business. A love of music, he recorded an album with Brazilian legendary singer S. Regina and acted in a handful of movies, making him a pop star as well. In 1962, Brazil won a second successive World Cup with an injured Pele supporting the team. It was in 1970, at the first World Cup broadcasted in color, that Pele put the cherry on top of his football legacy, one of the most celebrated World Cup performances in history. In the final, a 4-1 win over Italy, Pele scored a header, the team's opening goal that some people said he managed by freezing mid-air. He celebrated the goal in his typical manner, jumping and punching the air. The Italian defender that was appointed to mark Pele in the final said, I told myself before the game that Pele is made of skin and bones just like everyone else, but I was wrong. And that was Pele's 12th and final World Cup goal. In 1969, he had become the first player to score 1,000 goals. In 1974, Pele left Santos and played his final years in New York at a club called Cosmos. It was the only team he played for other than Santos and Brazil's national side. Pele wore the number 10 jersey but he did not know which number he would have and was assigned 10 randomly. The number 10 jersey has since then become associated with the world's best Maradona, Roberto Baggio, Zidane, and Leon Messi. Pele retired after playing 1,363 games, winning 37 titles, scoring 1,281 goals, including 92 career hat tricks. He spent his post football life involved in social activism, including being a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador. 
1995, he took public office as a minister of sports, introducing the legislation that grants players their own rights. In recent years, Pele struggled with his health. Aside from battling cancer, he also suffered from severe hip pain and spent most of his last years in a wheelchair. And on December 29th, 2022, Pele was announced dead at age 82. May his soul rest in peace.